Howdy, everybody. Hope you're having a great day uh, or night or afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Um, just obviously want to um, say thank you again for all the wonderful uh, comments you guys have given me um, and uh, support. It's really cool that you guys, uh, you all have great ideas and things that are helping me grow. And, uh, you know, obviously with the community, I just want to keep that up, right? Is what can we do to further help each other? And so I have gotten several comments from people saying like, oh, I wish I, you know, was as smart as you, or I just started programming and none of this makes sense, but I'm hoping it will. And I just want to say to all those people, it will make sense. Be patient, right? I remember, um, it feels like a million years ago, learning QBasic to program and, Things like, uh, you know, if statements felt like they boggled me, felt like they didn't make sense. Um, and so just be patient with yourself. It's all about growing and getting better. And so if these things are helping you even a little bit, then I think it's well worth your time and just keep growing and learning. And uh, very soon the teacher will become the master, right? And I'll be watching your videos, I'm sure, about how to do things that I don't understand in fields that I have interest in. So just keep it up and uh, let's keep the community going. And, you know, remember to stay positive. Uh, uh, you know, just, uh, I think I've heard it somewhere before, something along the lines of don't jo judge someone's end by your beginning or something like that. I, I don't know the exact thing, but that that's the idea, right? Is I've been doing this for a few years, this like puzzle solving stuff. And I've been programming for most of my adult life, which will, you know, is a lot if you look at the gray beard, but, um, and so there's lots of people that are in different, different places. And hopefully this can just be a learning opportunity for you. And with this, that said, um, what do we want to talk about today? Uh, well, what I want to talk to you about is called the a star search algorithm. And uh, why do I want to point it out to you? Well, I actually did this problem right here. Uh, I was, you know, um, still wanting to solve problems. And sometimes the uh, the ones in leet code aren't quite as difficult. Like if you have a half hour or 45 minutes, you can probably get to a solution, um, uh, especially for some of the easy or mediums. Whereas sometimes the... Advent of code takes me hours, right, to get to. Um, so anyway, I was just doing one of these as kind of a breather. Uh, um, and, you know, I, I'm on a high from solving all those Advent of code problems and wanted to do some more solving. And I got to this one and it lended itself to the A star algorithm. And we'll talk about why that is in a minute. And we'll talk about the problem in a minute. But I kind of want to talk about what is the A star problem. It actually has a cool background story. So I'll link this and you can read it. But the idea is they had a robot, Shaky the robot, and they used, they ended up coming up with this algorithm to help them find, you know, paths through like mazes or paths through, um, you know, uh, getting, uh, getting from one point to another, right? And so we'll talk about why that helps. But um, I just want to do a very, very quick review of Dijkstra because a star is just Dijkstra with a heuristic. And I want to make sure I'm saying that right. With a, I always, a lot of this stuff, yeah, heuristic. I, I often say these things in my mind and never have actually said them out loud. So I think I've joked with a couple other people when I'm recording. I don't feel like English is my first language all the time. So please, uh, please forgive me if I've ever misspoken or not said anything correct. Uh, I'll be happy to correct it if you, if you point it out or there's something gross that I, I missed, right? So anyway, Dijkstra is a shortest path algorithm, right? Is can you find the shortest path from one point to another? And the way that Dijkstra's work is, uh, again, we've talked about this, but at a very high level, uh, you're just visiting nodes on the graph and uh, tracking how far it took you to get to that node and then prioritizing going, uh, prioritizing venturing further based on uh, the shortest distance from those nodes so far, right? So we've talked about that before, but the idea is if you're using that priority queue, if you're prioritizing the shortest distances you've gone, you will eventually get to the solution in the shortest distance. 
And, you know, in the worst case, you, you've done a breadth first search and you've touched all the nodes to get to there. But in many cases, you've short circuited because you haven't had to traverse paths that are especially long uh, because you've you've prioritized shorter paths that uh, from the start. And then eventually you get to the end. Right. So here's what the function looks like. And we've seen this in code before. But again, the idea is you're going to you're going to create a bunch of uh, let's actually look at this one right here. Right. You're going to have a priority queue and you're going to you're going to um uh like work through that queue and find for uh, uh, always picking the minimum value you're going to find the neighbors of that place that you visited and then update your distances that's what this is doing uh and uh then you're going to like uh go to the next you're going to add all of its neighbors to those distances that you've been tracking and then you're going to pick the shortest distance from there right and so we can step through it really quick. I've got this graph here. This is actually kind of a simulation of the the map that it takes me and my wife to get from our home. We live out in the middle of nowhere, out in the country. So the time it takes to get from our home to a, a hospital here where my daughters are, I have a couple daughters that are medically complex. And so we spend a lot of time traveling to the hospital. And, um, uh, from a bird's eye or from the crow's eye, it's like actually not super far, but obviously we have to, we, we take a couple of roads that get us on a freeway and that freeway takes us most of the way there. And then we can take another highway and then a couple of roads that get us to the end. Right. Um, uh, there's other paths though, right. Is like, sometimes if I'm not feeling super stressed or not, uh, it's, I'm not, you know, running late or have to get there quickly. Sometimes I'll take this route, which is a highway, but there's lots of, uh, I don't know what they call it, a, a highway, but there's lots of stoplights. So there's many stops here and it kind of slows things down. Um, and so, you know, it adds some time, maybe 15 or 20 additional minutes to go this way, but you'll still get there. Um, and then there's this other one that takes you on the other side of the mountain, and then t you can get on another freeway that takes you across the valley and gets you to this point, but they get they then get you here, right? So, um, this we, we never take this route because it's just way out of the. It's these times aren't totally accurate, but it's just way out of the way, right? So you can see though, I have some times of estimates of like how long does it take to get from here to here, and how long does it take to get from here to here, right? Those are what the edges are, those distances. All of these I just added, they're all about five. You know, this is like, you can think about this as like city di city traffic and each of these going from here to here is about five minutes, right? You'll eventually get there, but it's a little bit slower. Now, if you're doing Dijkstra's, remember you're doing the shortest path. Um, you're always kind of tracking that shortest state. So you'll start with three and five, right? And then you'll pick the lowest, which is three. And so you go here and so you update, oh, well, if I want to go to here, it's going to cost me five total uh, from the start to here, right? Uh, and this one's five too. So you'll pick one of these. Let's say we pick this one and you're like, well, okay, if I want to go to J, it'll now cost me 35, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, now I have 35 and five and you'll just kind of keep doing this recursively, right? So it, say we pick here. And so our, so we move to here, and so now this one is 10, and this one is 10. So now we got two 10s and a 35. We'll now do like a 15 and a 15. Uh, and now that'll take us down here, and then, then this one is like a 30, right? And so that's high, this is high. And so we'll start doing some of these. So it'll be like 20, uh, 20, 20, and then like uh, 25, 25, 25. Um, we still haven't hit any of these yet, right? And so now we're at like 30. Oh, that one's kind of far. So we'll do this one to, and so this is like, uh, what is this? Uh, 25, uh, 45, 20, did I do that right? 25. Uh, so this one would be 30, 40, 35, 40. I can do math. Um, and then this, so now we have 30, 40, and 35 in our frontier. So we're get, definitely going to do this one. And so this one gets us here actually faster. 
So we actually don't ever use that one, right? Um, and so now this is uh, this one gets us there in 40. This is 35, so it's lower. So now we're going to add this one, which is 85. Uh, 45 is still lower, so we go here, and that gives us 45. 45 is still lower than 85, so we go here, which is 55. 55 is still lower. Oh, that gets us to the end, and we've solved it. So we know the answer is 55, the shortest distance. And if you trace the path, it's this path right here, right? But notice what we've done. We've had to, like, churn through all of this stuff, and even through up here, when if you kind of like visualize it in your mind, going here doesn't actually make a ton of sense because it's actually taking you like farther from the goal. And so maybe after you've done some traversing, there's no place left to try but here. But why would you try this one is maybe the question that was going through your mind when it's clear that going down the this way is actually getting you closer to your end goal, right? Uh, and again, this is much, uh, we're, we're treating this as a map, right? So, um, uh, but the idea is when you're traversing the graph, if there's some way for you to know how close you are to the goal, then um, if you include that in your calculation of which, which nodes to visit next, that might help you be better informed about which paths to try before you get to the end. And that's exactly what the A star algorithm is, um, is saying, uh, I mean, again, think about it in your mind. If you're looking at a map, it's fairly easy to say, oh, this is the freeway and it's only going to take me 20 minutes to get this distance. But if I start here and go here and then hop on this exit, get to this same exit, that this takes longer to get there. And so I'm, I'm always going to pick the freeway. You can visualize that, right? And why can you visualize that is... Well, going from here to here, it gets you f quicker to the goal than going from here to here and here to here and here to here and here to here, right? And why is that? It's because in your mind, it's very easy for you to calculate, oh, well, F is much faster to the goal, is is much closer to the goal than L, right? And um, even though there's a bunch of nodes in the way of here, you can you can see like this is getting you much slower, right? And so the way the way to think about the A star algorithm is can you do that stuff that kind of like visually you can see really well, but put it into an algorithm, right? And that's exactly what A star is. Um, is it's just um, Dijkstra, but you also use a heuristic to um, calculate how far you are away from the goal. And so they, they do it formalized here in math where they say um, your priority function. So if you remember in Dijkstra, your priority is what's the shortest distance I've traveled. In A star, it's the G of N is that what's the shortest distance I've traveled. But the H of N is that heuristic, which is just a fancy word for saying like a, a quick estimation uh, so, like, what is your quick estimation of getting to the goal from this point? Like, how far am I to the end? Um, so, in your map, that may look like it may just be calculating the distance, right? Maybe we're on a grid system here, so we calculate the Manhattan distance, and we say, oh, well, this the distance from here to here is, uh, I don't know, 10, and the distance from here to here is, uh, or from here to here is uh, 45 or whatever, and so um, uh, this node's total, right, it's f of x, which is uh, g of x plus h of x. Oh, sorry, that was terrible writing. Uh, so this node's is, uh, you know, you've traveled 30 plus 10 for the heuristic. This one is you've traveled 15 plus 45 for the heuristic. So uh, you actually want to, this one is lower, right? So this one is 40, this one is 60. You want to you want to prioritize this one over this one, right? So we want to go to this one before, we want to try this one before we try this one. Uh, I probably should have been using this little thing because I've now made a mess of this. But let's talk about why that works, right? Again, it works because 
not only are you tracking how far you've gone, but you're tracking, give me a rough idea quickly, again, quickly of how far I get there, right? And so picking the right heuristic will help, uh, if you do it right, will help you get there fast. Uh, not only picking the right one, but if you, um, uh, um, if you pick a good one that's fast, it will it will really help, right? And we'll talk about picking a good one in a second. But I just want to, if we if we do that, like what's the what's the what's the just Manhattan distance from these two nodes? Let's kind of track that uh, and run the algorithm again to see where we get, right? So we're gonna do the same thing. Is we're gonna add these nodes, but now we're gonna add a heuristic to it as well, right? So this one is five, but let's say it you know, it's it's now five plus 80, that's the heuristic. This one is three plus, I don't know, 70 or whatever, right? Um, and so uh, this one is substantially bigger. We're not gonna uh, tr do this. And so now we do this one and let's say it is, so we're gonna go this way. And so now this is five plus, I don't know, uh, 65. So this is 70, which is still lower than 85. So we're gonna pick this one first, right? We're gonna go down this path. We've gone down this one um, and now we're going to look consider these nodes and so this one is five plus five will be ten but what is its heuristic like what is its distance to the thing let's say it's i don't know six uh 60 right so this is 10 plus 60 uh right and then this one is 10 as well right but let's add our heuristic in there and let's say that this one is i mean it's a little less right it's uh i don't know it's it's pretty close it these aren't great representation of times, but let's just say it's uh, um, uh, 60 as well, just for, for argument's sake, right? So I now have two that are 70 and this one is 85. So I'll, I'll, I'll tra let's, we'll, we'll try this one first. So these ones are all five, right? And so we'll say, so this one is now 15, but it gets us further away from the goal. So it's 65 and this one is 15 too. And it gets us, uh, I don't know, uh, 55 as well, right? So we've now got 80 and uh, 70 and 70. And let's say we pick this one next, right? Uh, so this is 20 plus 10. So that's still our distance. But now we want to calculate a heuristic, like how far are we from here? And let's say now that's only 30, right? So now this distance is 40. This distance is or the total, right, that is 40. The total here is, again, 70. This is 80, and then this is 85. So we're gonna pick this one. And so we're gonna go to this one, and now uh, we'll say it's a directed graph, so we only ever go this way. And so we say now this is going to be, um, uh, sorry, did I do that wrong? Uh, 30 plus 30, 60, it's still lower than these. So, uh, so this is gonna be 40. And let's say the distance here now is only, I don't know, 12 or whatever. So we have 42, um, 70, 80, and 85. So we're gonna go down this way more. And so we go this way. So this is 45 plus it's 10 away, let's say. So this is 55. It's still lower than all these three. So we're gonna do this one first. And so now we get here, which is 55 plus zero. And obviously that's still lower than all these, so we're gonna traverse here. And oh, we've hit the end, and we know the total distance is 55. So how did this differ from Dijkstra, this kind of walkthrough that I did, right? Notice that I, I did not actually visit any of like these nodes uh, right here, right? None of these nodes actually got traversed, right? Whereas in Dijkstra, I kind of, went through all of them, right? Um, and that's actually often the case when you're dealing with maps. If you think about distances and times and stuff like that, they don't actually, a lot of them are fairly the same, right? Is like um, the free, the difference between a freeway and like a normal street, depending on traffic may not be a lot, right? Um, and so it will cause you to kind of like ping pong through, right? Is like, You'll say, oh, let's try this node, so I'll go here. Oh, but I was over here and it was shorter, so now I'm gonna move here. And you're slowly, especially in these like tight areas like this, you're gonna end up traversing most, if not all of the nodes in Dijkstra's. A star with that heuristic 
gives you some insight into how far away you are and allows you to right these are still on your frontier of like hey should i go should i visit these nodes but because of the heuristic you don't actually go there and so um you know for a map thing it's really easy to say uh oh well if i just know how far i am to the goal i can get there faster by like picking these nodes now i don't know if i've said this before but when i was thinking about this earlier right it's quite possible that google maps and stuff like that doesn't actually use an actual algorithm like this or apple maps or garmin or whatever um they they probably have done these pre-calculations and then they update a lot of the pre-calculations based on like traffic patterns and stuff like that and so uh you know they probably still do some type of algorithm to to find the shortest path but they've done a lot of like pre-calculation up front that makes it easier to solve obviously they aren't taking every single road from point a to point b and like traversing it to get there right that would take a lot of effort but i'm sure they still do something along these lines right and uh and again using something like a star where you have like some known information can be valuable because it eliminates those nodes um and so just to show you that that's actually how it works i've got some code here so i've created a grid pattern right we want to be able to calculate for our heuristic how far we are from the goal and so i used like a grid system right to to kind of so i could do like a manhattan style distance of like how far i am from the goal um uh, so that's what these are those are all my points and then i've created a neighbor's function that says like how far is it to go from each or a neighbor's map that says like how far is it to go from each point to some other thing right i'm using a directed graph here but you can imagine it working however you wanted right uh, and then i have some start and end functions and then i have a neighbors function which will just help me with you know uh going through this hash map right here um and then i have a completion function that says hey how do i know if i'm done and then i can just do dykstra's and a stars based on that information right so if you see my pretty uh, uh previous videos a lot of this is the same Obviously, I want to track the state, which is the node I'm at and how much it cost me to get there for Dijkstra's. I need to do some comparisons. And because I'm doing a min heap, I want to do like the reverse. Um, uh, so I want the smallest values to get sorted first um, or to get popped off the heap first. And so that's what I do here. Uh, I haven't commented a lot of this because, again, it's a lot the same of what we've done before. Um, I did try and though, if, if it looks ugly, I'm sorry. It's because I thought, oh, can I do this in a very uh, um, generic way? And so, uh, you know, that's why you see all these impulse with, you know, where N is blah is because I tried to do it in like a generic style way. Um, but here's Dijkstra's. And again, I just need to know my start node. How do I, what are the, uh, a function that will tell me the neighbors and what is a function that will tell me if I'm done, right? And otherwise, it looks similar to what we've done before, right? We do a queue where we're going to track our, uh, you know, track our frontier. These are the nodes we want to. I don't know why I didn't call it frontier. Maybe I should do that right now. So I have some frontier that I'm that that are nodes that I can visit. Again, it's going to be a min heap where I visit the shortest nodes first. Then I have some distances that I'm tracking. So I know if I've been to that path before and if there's some like shorter distance or not, right? Then otherwise I'm gonna just keep popping off the heap until I'm done or I've found my solution, right? If I ever get to the point where I'm done, then I can, when I've completed the search, then I can stop. Otherwise I'm going to uh, check, find all the neighbors and I'm gonna update my costs and I'm gonna see if, hey, is have I have I been to this point before and if I have, if there's some, if I've already found a shorter path, I don't need to continue down this path. Otherwise, I'm gonna add myself to the frontier or add that neighbor to the frontier, I guess I should say. And then I'm going to um, add, update my distances so I, so I can track that later, right? And that's the algorithm, right? If you look at it, it's only, I don't know, 20, 30 lines of code. There's not much to Dijkstra. Um, and uh, so what changes with A star? 
Well, no. Remember, I said earlier, A star is uh, it has that function. It's uh, oh, you're gonna hate my writing. I'm sorry. It's f of x is equal to g of x, which is the distance uh, plus h of x, which is the uh, heuristic. So those are the, that's what I want to that's what I that's what's going to inform my priority queue, right? And so when I'm sorting, now I also just need that heuristic and I just say, you know, compare the sum of my cost and heuristic with the or the sum of an, the others heuristic and cost with the sum of my own. Right? So that's all that's changed between those. I guess I can show them to you together. Um So here's my previous comparison down here. Here's my new comparison up here. All I've done is added the heuristic. Otherwise, A star is identical. The only difference is I now need to track that heuristic, right? Um, there's potential if you wanted to do it like faster or is not as much like gobbledygook generic programming is you could just kind of track these values separately and it'd be a little bit smaller, but you can see I didn't actually add much code to get a star. The only difference is I add this heuristic and then when I'm popping from the queue, obviously I'm using that sort that includes the heuristic. And then when I add my neighbors, I just also add the heuristic uh, or I call that heuristic function for that neighbor. And what is that heuristic function? So you can see down here when I call Dijkstra, I have a neighbors function and a complete function. The same thing with a star. I have a neighbors function and a complete function, but I also have that heuristic function. And what is the heuristic function? It's right here. I just call distance on the two points, right? And what is that? I think I did the Manhattan distance. Yeah, here's the Manhattan distance, which we've seen before is just uh, the difference of the X's, uh, the absolute value of the difference of the X's plus the absolute value of the difference of the Y's. That gives you like the you know, how far am I that way, right? It's Manhattan distance. You could use other other heuristics. As long as you use a heuristic that is a pretty good representation of, hey, how here's how I got here, right? Um, and then once you've done that, you can see, again, there's not much different between Dijkstra and A-star. A, a, a I hope that's you'll understand that. The real difference is um, I'm now adding a heuristic to help me, help me like, um, visit nodes that are more likely to get me to the end earlier in my like prioritization of those things. So if I uh, if I run it, you can see here's the two here's the two of them. Dijkstra they both give me a cost of fifty five, which I think right that's what I got at the end for both of them. Uh, but Dijkstra had to visit eighteen nodes, where A star only had to visit nine. And if you look at that, I think that's right. Eighteen nodes is like literally all of them. Whereas one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, my my calculations may not be perfect, but it was probable that uh, A star only had to visit like these nine nodes to get me to the answer, to get me to the solution. And and why again? Why is that? It's this heuristic. That's all that's changed. So um, the way to think about it is when you're uh, what I want you to think about is when you're trying to solve a problem is ask yourself, is it Dijkstra or is it A star? And the way you know if it's Dijkstra or A star is, can do you have some way to official, efficiently calculate this heuristic? To efficiently say, hey, here's a quick way for me to get an idea of how far I am from the goal. Obviously, maps are great in doing that, right? But we've actually had some problems in Advent of Code where I just did Dijkstra um, and it got to the problem fast enough. If I was really trying to be efficient or trying to be fast about it, I might have used A star because a lot of them were grid style problems, and that lends themselves to saying, "Oh, I'm, I, 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 how far am I to the end?" And you might be able to find that somewhat faster using an A star style algorithm. Okay. Um, uh, so there you go. That is the difference between A star and Dijkstra, and that is what the A star is. Uh, again. Uh, at a very high level, just a way to think about it is A star is Dijkstra with a heuristic function. If you include that in your prioritization of the frontiers that you want to visit, the frontier that you want to visit, you'll then visit nodes that are 
that are going to get you there faster. So why did all this come up? Well, I was actually, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, I was working on trying to, um, you know, uh, keep my programming skills up to snuff and kind of missing not being able to solve advent to code stuff. I do have previous years that I haven't solved, so maybe I could do those. But I went to leak code and I found this one. It's one of the places I like to go just to solve problems. Often because the advent of code, especially when I can't just sit down and program, maybe like a multi-day thing where I do an hour here, an hour here. Often with the leak codes, I can solve it in a half an hour or an hour. Maybe the hard ones take me a few hours and so it takes me a little bit longer, but they're often relatively easy to solve. And so I came here and uh, as I was reading the problem, the things kind of led me to say, oh, I can solve this with A star. And so that's what I want to point out to you is like uh, with this problem. Initially, as you're reading it, it may not seem like a graph problem. Uh, but, uh, and I don't want this to become like the graph theory channel, um, many problems can be thought of as a graph, especially if you have some state and you want to move that state to some goal state, um, and uh, you can uh, you can fidget with the state to get you to that goal state, you can think about it as a graph problem. And the nodes that or the edges and the nodes that you visit are just the fidgets you do with that state to get you closer to that solution, right? So you don't have a traditional, maybe in this one, you don't have a traditional map like this that you could actually spit out and view, but you do have some, you know, start state and some end state, and uh, all of these are just, you know, uh, um, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three, and then based on all those, you have new neighbors that you know you can do that will eventually lead you to this state, right? That's the way to think about it. And so let's read this problem, and hopefully, as you're going with that, reading through it. You can think about in your mind, uh, you know, which I did as I was reading the problem uh, of how do I treat this as a graph um, and uh, or what are the key things that make me think of this like a graph or maybe better said, what are the parts of this problem that make it a good candidate for A star or Dijkstra, but in particular A star, okay? So this one's called open the lock and you're given a, a lock with four circular wheels. So I don't know if you've seen these before, but they're a little bit, they're like on suitcases. You know, you can kind of spin them. They start at zero, you can spin them around and they roll over, right? Like if you get to nine, you can roll back to zero. You just keep doing that until you get the right combination and then it opens it, right? And they say the lock initially starts with four zeros and you're gonna be given a list of dead ends where if you ever hit one of these, you, uh, it like, seals the lock or whatever and you can't open it um but and and then you're going to be given a target which is where you want to get to so you want to go from four zeros to some target but not ever hit any of these dead ends so here's one of the examples right the target is 0202 so you start at 000 you want to go to 0202 and here's the list of the dead ends, right? Notably in this one, the 0201 and the 0102, you might think if you're like looking at the problem is like, oh, I can like, if I just spin the, the second and fourth ones to two, that's only four that will get me there, um, right? But you can actually visualize this problem and think of like a six solution for it. Obviously you can't do the four solutions because these get you, these patterns like kind of get you in the way. But one thing you can do, and it talks about here, is just flip this first digit to a 1, and then, then move these to 202, and flip the 1 back to a 0, right? So that would only that would get you there in uh, 6 moves, whereas something like this one it shows you below, it would get you there, but it's not valid because you've got 0102 in there, which is one of the dead ends, right? Um, Okay, why does this lend itself to a graph problem? Well, you get you're given some initial state and you want some end state, right? Those are those are key candidates for graphing problems. You have some initial state and some end state, and then you're given a description of how to generate neighbors and which of the neighbors are not valid neighbors, right? So uh, the way to think about it is, you know, when I was implementing this Dijkstra right here, right? 
think about all I need to give Dijkstra or A star. I just have to give a neighbor function and if I'm done, right? So I have a start state, an end state, and some function that will determine what the neighbors are of each state. And then it will do the job of finding the fastest path for me, right? So looking at this problem, I have those, right? Here's my start state. Here's my end state. Here's how I traverse through the neighbors, right? I can just flip each one up or down for each of the times. And then here's some special cases that I need to account for in my neighbor's solution, right? What is about it is, what about this though, is it that differentiates it from just a plain Dijkstra? Because you could solve it with Dijkstra. What makes A star a compelling algorithm for this? It's very easy to calculate that heuristic function. And what is that, right? You know how far you are from the target relatively easy, right? If your current position is 0, 0, 0, 0, you know that you can just calculate, well, what is how long does it take me to get to 202 from where I'm at? It's a simple subtraction problem, right? I need to move this one too, and I need to move this one too. Don't worry about the dead ends. Just, I mean, you could if you wanted. But actually, it wouldn't help for a heuristic. I would say don't worry about the dead ends. Just do a quick estimation. Again, it's a heuristic. What's a quick estimation of how many steps I need? And you say, okay, from 0, 0, 0, it's about 4. And why does that help, especially in this problem? Think about the state, uh, the, the, the quote-unquote neighbors you're creating. Each of these can move up or down one place. So from each current state, there are eight neighbors, right? This could be a one or a nine. 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 That's eight neighbors, right? Maybe some of them aren't valid or aren't or, or end up in dead ends, but those are all the neighbors you have to consider. And at when you're doing Dijkstra's, all of those are the same distance. And so you'll want to calculate all eight of those. Then uh, then all of those distances will have some, you, you know, uh, maybe eventually you'll find some nodes you visited before, right? Some states you visited before that you don't want to process, but you will, uh, you'll, you'll have eight and then another eight, another, maybe another seven or six, right? The, 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 the number of things that you have, the number of states that you have to visit greatly expands in this solution. But with A star, you can f kind of think about filtering all of those new states that you're creating, right? Yes, you have eight new neighbors, but many of them don't get you closer to the goal, right? Imagine <clears throat> um, flipping this digit to a nine, that doesn't get you closer to the goal, that gets you further away from the goal. You now have to flick this you know, one more time to get you back. So why would you consider that until you've considered other options that are getting you much closer to the goal, if that makes sense, right? Um, and that's where A star can be fascinating and helpful is I, I'm generating a lot of states or there's a lot of paths I could take, right? Just like this solution right here. There's a lot of states right here that can like um, cause trouble with Dijkstra. So can I have some heuristic that helps me like guides me to prefer these paths when I'm looking for that solution. And that's what this one does, right? So let's look at the solution and I think maybe you'll kind of be able to visualize. Again, the <clears throat> I should say I implemented it in Dijkstra, but I also implemented it in A star just so you could see both of them. Both of them though, again, are largely the same. It's just one uses a heuristic function and one use uh, but they uh, and one doesn't but they both use the same neighbors function i implemented this the code looks a little different i implemented this more leak code style because they they want i32s and they mentioned that like if you ever get to the end you return a negative one whereas i think in our code we were returning none right if there was no path we returned that so anyway but what does it look like well, I need to set up some of my uh, string. I need to turn my strings into vectors of digits, right? They give me strings. I'm gonna use digits so I can easily increment and decrement them. Um, you could potentially just use them as characters and up and down the characters, that's also possible. But I figured I'd just do it up front, turn them into digits, and then I could muck with them later. But then I have a queue, I have my distances. I, I'm still going to pop off the queue 
and I'm still gonna, uh, I, I call my neighbors function to get my neighbors. Again, I'm hoping that all of this looks the same to you. What changes for this actual problem, right, is obviously I wanna track dead ends. So I say, if I hey, if I ever get a dead end, I, I don't want to go down that path. I know that's not gonna get me to my solution, so I, so I stop there. Uh, but then my neighbors function is just slightly different, right? And what does that neighbors function look like? Well, it's just right here, right? Is uh, just for each of each of my different current positions, I either increment by one or decrement by one. This is just a fancy way of moving up or down, uh, right? Remember, it rolls over, so you can use the modulus operator to help you like roll over when you're doing this stuff, and that's what these functions help you to do. So again, I'm just going up by one or going down by one, and I'm adding that. So each neighbor is giving me eight new neighbors. And what is their distance from the previous one? Well, it's just one, right? It One tick gets you one distance. Um, but I then want to have my heuristic function, right? How far is my current position from the target? And what does that look like? Well, um, this is just a fancy way of me calculating the distance I am from, e from every position, right? So for each of the states, I do the difference of that to its uh, equivalent target, calculate its actual absolute value, and do the diff of that, or do the min of that difference versus 10 minus the difference. This is like saying, is it faster for me to roll over, is essentially the way to think about this, right? Going from one to nine, I could either go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or I could go nine, zero, one, right? Or one, zero, nine, whatever way I was going before. And this is just a fancy way of doing that. So um, anyway, otherwise, this is just um, A star. Again, the code looks slightly different because I did it in a um, more leak code way, but it should look familiar to you. It's the same stuff we are doing. We're adding stuff to the queue, updating our distances. You know, um, we're not going down paths that, uh, that we've already found faster paths for. Um, it, all that's changed is what is our neighbors function and what is our heuristic. Otherwise, it's largely the same, right? Now, I have implemented it in Dijkstra, and again, Dijkstra is just the same as A star, but it doesn't have that heuristic function. But I want you to look at running it, what the difference is, and why this is a candidate for an A star type algorithm. They both get you to the right answer, right? But it takes Dijkstra 962 checks, right? You're visiting 962 nodes versus... Um, excuse me, versus A star, which only took nine, right? So the solution was six. You only visited three more additional nodes to get you to that solution. And the way to think about why that probably took a little long is a couple of those solutions got you to dead ends. So you kind of, you that ended up not being the path, but you were still picking preferred paths that got you to that place, right? Um, uh, or paths that the heuristic said are getting you closer so you did those ones first. Whereas again, with Dijkstra, each of those states you're creating, many of them have the same distance. And so you're going to end up visiting a lot of them first before you like actually progress through the thing. Um, and so that's just what I hope you'll get out of this is um, add A star. Did I say A plus a couple times? I'm sorry. Add the A star to your toolkit of ways to solve problems, right? You may not work at Google Maps, uh, but hopefully you can see the, the, the help that A star can really provide in this stuff, right? Again, I don't know if those mapping companies actually use the A star, but they probably use uh, an idea akin to this to help inform them, right? This heuristic function is really informative of, like, you can think about it as kind of pruning the state space, right? Is like, I just don't want to worry about these other states because they they don't have as much impact on getting me to the goal as some of these states down here. And so I'm going to process these first. So when you're looking at solving problems, and again, in Advent to Code, I guess I don't know if I said this, but there were a couple of Advent to Code days where I could have potentially used A star and it might have made the algorithm faster, right? I don't know if it was as explosive as this, right? Like if you think about like this solution, the map solution, it halves it. This is like orders of magnitude. And so can you imagine 
if the state space was even worse or it was some one that required substantially more calculations a star could get you there substantially faster than dykstra right um just uh, uh okay going back to what i said is think about the ways that you could solve a problem and think do they lend themselves first of all to one of these pathfinding algorithms right can, is it a shortest path thing do i have some state some in state and can I calculate, can I figure out what those neighbors are? Um, that will lead you to Dijkstra. And then ask the additional question, is there an easy way for me to calculate the heuristic? And if there is, then I'll use an A-star algorithm to get me there faster, right? So there you go. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Again, just as a quick recap, a lot of this was, hey, I want to solve a problem. This looks like an A-star problem. I think I submitted it already. Hopefully it worked. Yeah, there you go. Uh, not super fast. Um, not memory efficient either. Yikers. But um, you know, I think it's a. I think it's a good candidate. I actually haven't looked. Uh, this guy def says a star. Yeah, editorial. These guys say breadth first. Okay. So uh, yeah, breadth first would probably work. Again, I don't think it's a, Dijkstra is essentially a breadth first um, uh, for this case because all the all the costs are one. So I think you could solve it much faster using an A star. But again, think about just uh, think about when you're solving these problems. Do I have some initial state, some end state, and some way for me to calculate neighbors? And then you immediately know you're in the graph theory thing. Even though it's not strictly a graph problem, you can think about it as a graph problem and you can solve it with one of these things. And one last time, I know I've said it a bunch of times, what is the difference between the two? A star is just Dijkstra's with a heuristic function. So if you have some efficient way to calculate a heuristic, some way to say, how close am I to the goal? Like this open the lock one or the map problem, using a star could help get you there faster and it could help you solve the problems much more efficiently right so add that to your toolkit uh, we'll keep talking about these things different ways to solve problems either through problems that i've done or maybe if there's another algorithm you want me to talk about i do feel like we've talked a lot about graph theory in the last little while so uh, maybe we'll try and find some more dynamic programming style ones to to solve in coming ones to help get, get you familiar with those things. But solving these problems, having Dijkstra and A-star in your like toolkit is a huge boon. boon. There's, uh, there's frequently problems, especially advent of code, where those type of graph theory pro sol solutions uh, get, you to, uh, get you to a solution really quick. So just keep those in mind as you're doing your stuff. And uh, I hope everybody has a fantastic, fantastic day or night or whatever uh, time zone you may be in. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.